Hey guys, Spud here, and today we get to use the new ANAAQ-33 Sniper Advanced Targeting Pod for the very first time together. This pod, and the features it brings with it, have pushed the DCS F-16C Fighting Falcon out of early access and into its release state. The Sniper Advanced Targeting Pod was originally designed to meet a specification for a targeting pod that could optically locate and track enemy air defenses well outside of their WES, and then subsequently guide smart munitions such as JSOWs into said SAM sites in the destruction of enemy air defenses role, making the AAQ-33 sniper pod a perfect match for the ASQ-213 HTS pod and the Block 50 Viper at least circa 2007 when our Viper is supposed to be in service. So let's jump in and get started. Alright guys, we are back in the office of the F-16C Fighting Falcon for the first time in quite a while to use the brand new Sniper Advanced Targeting Pod for the very first time. And I figured it'd be appropriate to try it out for the first time here in the destruction of enemy air defenses role that the pod was originally designed for. So let's go ahead and uh, configure our cockpit here for engaging a SA-11 site off of our 9 o'clock here by first running a quick fence check. So we'll make sure we've got plenty of fuel here. We have our external lights turned off. We're navigating to the correct steer point for now. We'll set up our countermeasures systems. And we'll go countermeasures uh, switch aft to set our jammer to active, so that way we can safely engage this SA-11 site off of our left-hand side. And finally, we'll go with employment, so master arm on, air to ground master mode, we'll turn on power to our JSALs, and we're going to drop our JSALs in pairs with a line of breast release pattern for the bomblets coming out of those weapons, and we'll have them fly about 250 feet apart for today. We're going to bring up our HAD page on our right MFD, and then on our left MFD, let's go ahead and bring up our TGP page, which is showing the video feed from our brand new AAQ-33 sniper pod. So at this point, let's go ahead and see if we can start to detect that snowdrift radar. Looks like we do have a search radar up on our RWR there, so that should be good. Let's go ahead and start turning on off to the left-hand side here and see if we can get our HTS pod to start to pick up that snowdrift so that way we can start uh, getting a good triangulation on where that SA-11 site is located. Now, of course, we're flying as a single ship today for our little demonstration and uh, for trying out the sniper pod. But if you have a flight of multiple F-16s all carrying HTS pods, it can be a lot faster to actually triangulate the location of that SAM site because you'll have many more data points for that triangulation method being given to your jet by the other members of your flight and their HTS pods. So we'll go ahead and roll out here and we'll just hold this heading for now and see if we can start to get our HTS pellet to start picking up that snowdrift. There she is. So I'll put our cursors over the top of the snowdrift here and we'll go target management switch up in order to select that snow drift as our target. And we can see we've got a lateral error of about 2.1 nautical miles 
and a um, distance error of about 24 nautical miles here. So we're definitely not very confident as to where that snow drift is actually located at this point. And we can start to see the Suez Canal zone out here in the haze and dust of the Sinai Peninsula. And if we start to kind of use our pod a little bit here, we can maybe start to narrow down where that snow drift is located. We can see our lateral uh, deviation is going down as well as our distance deviation is going down as well. So let's go ahead and we'll pop our soy over to our sniper pod. Keep it in TV mode for now. And perfect. That looks like an airfield in our picture in picture mode there. I'm guessing that a SAM site is going to be located on the airfield. So let's go ahead and switch her over to white hot mode and use white hot mode to find a hot spot for that SAM site itself. And then we'll zoom in via TV mode. So we'll go ahead and zoom in, put her into area track mode, and we're starting to mask our pod. So let's go ahead and make another left-hand turn here so that way we don't mask our pod too badly. And we'll go ahead and do a double tap on expand FOV so that way we can get the XR settings. There we go, we've got the XR portion of the pod done, and it looks like we can start to get a better picture here of the SAM site itself. And I'm going to go ahead and keep my crosshairs slightly biased towards us from the snowdrift radar itself, due to the fact that the bomblets coming from our JSAOs tend to fall a little bit long. All right, that should be good to go. Let's turn off our autopilot. We'll go target management switch up to set a target. And we'll go ahead and plug the burners. And we'll start to come off to the left-hand side here. Looks like our HDS pod lost the snowdrift, and now it's back again. Right. I'm going to go back to my SMS page, make sure all of my weapon settings are set correctly, which it looks like they are. Going pretty darn fast. We're pretty darn high. We're definitely within the range of our JSALs. So let's go ahead and ripple them off. And they are away. Our jammer is doing its thing. And hopefully the SA-11 battery doesn't shoot down my JSAOs here, but they shouldn't because the JSAOs do have some stealthy qualities to them. We'll go to our HSD page and see if we can get outside of the WES of that SA-11 here. So far, they haven't shot at me. And we got a master caution here after dropping all of those JSAOs off our wings. So we'll go to stores config cat one. That'll get rid of that master caution and give us a little bit of extra maneuverability to get away from any SAMs that might get shot at us here. All right. And for better BDA, why don't we swap her back on over to TV mode? Increase some contrast here, play with things a little bit. And looking at the F10 map, we can see our weapons are still flying on out there. And we'll make another quick snap turn here 
in order to both stay outside of the WES of the SA-11, keep the radar's attention, and ensure that we don't mask our targeting pod, so that way we can get good battle damage assessment on the SAM site itself. And look at the F F-10 map again here, and the weapons as they're flying. They're getting pretty close. Perfect. Let's see if we can play with the contrast a little bit more. Starting to get close to masking the pod again. We'll make another quick turn. There we go. And they are flying into position to drop their bomblets. And again, the reason why I biased the crosshairs just slightly towards our original position there when I pickled off the JSAOs was simply just so that way we could get them to fall a little bit closer to our target here. They tend to fall a little bit long. And there we go. A nice good spread of weapons all across the target there. So moving the crosshairs here slightly to check out some more BDA. Looks like we definitely took out some of the supply trucks. Definitely the snowdrift radar, which will make it harder for the actual SA-11 launchers to acquire their targets. However, we unfortunately, it looks like we missed the um, actual SA-11 launchers themselves, so they'll have to be hit by follow-on strikes or by our wingmen that we don't have for today's demonstration. And guys, I think the sniper pod is pretty darn cool, if you ask me. And it's very cool to have a better implemented pod that is uh, more realistic due to the fact that the lightning pod before was more of a mashup between how the old lantern pod and the new lightning pod actually works. And it's very cool to use a sniper pod here in the role that it was originally built for, which is being able to optically track and guide smart weapons into enemy air defenses at extreme range outside of the WES of those air defenses. And it's quite obvious when you use the pod how much work went into this because it obviously does a lot of new things that pods in DCS World previously couldn't do, as well as of course the fact that there was a lot of new video filtering and things like that that Eagle Dynamics obviously implemented to give the video feed from the pod the correct look. Now I know there's some speculation out there that uh, you can't see quite as far with the sniper pod as you could the old lightning pod. Personally, I haven't really noticed that so much. I actually think you can start to see a little bit further with the sniper pod than you could with the older uh, lightning pod. But uh, of course, that's always up for debate. But in real life, based off of the 2007 version of the Sniper XR and the Lightning Pod, you should, in theory, be able to see further with the Sniper Pod than the older Lightning Pod. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, if this video helped you out in any way, please leave a like and a subscribe and even a comment. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Enjoy this beautiful game, guys, and uh, fly safe out there.